Hi, this is Justice with Tablet Pro. In this video, we're going to be talking about the differences between the Surface Pro 8 and the Surface Pro 7 Plus. Now, in a lot of ways, they're very similar, and in some really key ways, they're very, very different. The Surface Pro 8, the biggest difference immediately is the screen. So the processor is about the same in both devices. This screen is larger. It has thinner bezels, both on the top and on the side. The sides are much thinner. So you've got a larger screen. It's about 15% brighter. It goes from 400 nits to 450 nits. Please correct my math in the comments. And it's 120 hertz refresh rate. That screen with the improved Slim Pen 2 makes us a better choice for artists. It's brighter. It's a tiny little bit faster, but I wouldn't pick it over that reason. And the inking experience, I'll put this in, uh, I'll demo this here in just a second, but the inking differences are a pretty big improvement. Now, the downsides to this over the 7 Plus, this one no longer has a micro SD card slot. That means that the storage that you get on this, and yes, it does have a removable hard drive here, but the process of replacing that is um, not as simple as just taking it out and sliding something else in there. So keep in mind, most of us, if we buy this at a certain specific size, that's the size that we're stuck with or that we will end up being stuck with. You can use OneDrive to offload files. You can do a couple different things to make better use of your storage. So here, if you have 512 gigabytes, that's essentially what you have available. This one, I have a 512 gigabyte micro SD card and I have games stored on it that, that play perfectly from the micro SD card slot, like regular AAA games play really well, no degradation in performance playing off the micro SD card slot. This one also has a USB-A port, the Pro 8 has two USB-C ports, and these ports are Thunderbolt 4, which means if you've got an external GPU, which is a significant price increase, keep that in mind. Um, if you are wanting to play games with it, you might want to consider the Laptop Studio, and I've got some uh, different videos up on that, so check that out. But these are Thunderbolt 4, which means that not only do they charge like the USB-C port, on the Pro 7 Plus, but you can use external GPUs and other Thunderbolt 4 devices, which I'm not familiar with what some of those other ones are. But that's a really, really big deal for some people. You're going to want to have a higher spec CPU on this. So if you're getting the i5 and then doing your gaming with an eGPU, you, you may end up with the bottleneck. So you might want to go with the i7 model. Uh, another thing to consider with these two devices this one supports third-party accessories. So this one, I've got a $50. This is a Bluetooth keyboard by Uogic. It's the only Bluetooth keyboard that I've tried. It charges with the USB-C. I've got a little magnetic head on there right now, but USB-C charging. It's good. 50 bucks. 279. Includes the stylus, and the stylus is great. It's legitimately great. It's a great keyboard as well. It is not Bluetooth, which means that you're going to be connecting it to this and keeping it connected anytime that you want to use the keyboard. So with the Surface Pro, this is 7 Plus. So the stylus, I recommend here the R520C. It's great. It's 35 bucks. The Slim Pen 2, which is even better, is 130 and so there's there's a pretty big jump there. Now, the Slim Pen 2 says is compatible with the 7 Plus. However, I've done some additional research. I'll put a link in the description here. But the compatibility that it's talking about does not include the haptics. So you're not going to get that little rumble, that tactile feel of drawing on paper on the screen with the Slim Pen 2 with the Surface Pro 7 Plus. The stylus attaches magnetically here. On the Pro 8, it does not attach on the side here where there's the charging thing. It attaches a little bit. On the base, actually is not too bad, although you have to actually move it slightly off center to get a good connection. 
But if you're using the Surface Pro 8 with a keyboard, that's going to be kind of a weird place to store the stylus. So keep in mind, you can use this and it does a decent job, but it's not going to be quite the same as you might be wanting or if you're expecting it to attach to the side, it no longer does that. So let's go ahead and we're going to look at the stylus here. So I'm going to draw three lines here. Oh, by the way, these stylus, you, you have to turn it on by pressing the uh, side button. All right, so here. Uh, these ones are the ones I just drew. Should be able to see that pretty clearly. It's very nice with this stylus. Now let's open up I'm using the app Concepts. which is a really cool app. If you guys haven't tried it, it's in the store. All right, and let's do the same thing here. Let's pick a different color. Uh, I'll have a video up shortly that um, goes through some of the better apps, drawing apps for touchscreens. All right, so we have black selected. And I'll zoom in here so you can see the quality here. And it's decent. It's pretty good. Slim Pen 2. Drawing a box around these. This right here, this is going to show you kind of the quality. It's pretty similar. It's a little bit better than the Slim Pen 2, both of which are significantly better than the Surface Pen. Let's go ahead, we'll scoot over. You can see the Surface Pen right here with the underline. That's the Surface Pen in Concepts, and Concepts does have some line stabilization. So uh, we currently have it turned all the way off though. All right, this is the Surface Pen on the, I'll do double underline, Surface Pen on the Pro 8. You can see it's not very good. And then the Slim Pen 2. The Slim Pen 2 has this beautiful, very nice haptic feedback that I like a lot. And the lines are perfect with the Slim Pen 2. The R520C right here. And, whoops, an SP2017 right here. Okay, so you guys have an idea of what that looks like. If you guys have questions about differences on the two computers, this one is heavier. It feels heavier. It feels very, very solid. It's not that different um, on paper, but it feels denser. And this one feels pretty light. And it feels like it's a little bit... Um, it, it just doesn't feel quite as firm. It's not bad. This one feels like a cutting board. It feels like a piece of metal. It's very, very solid. This one is slightly, slightly shorter from side to side, slightly taller from top to bottom than the Surface Pro 7 Plus, that line. With them stacked on top of each other, you can see a difference here. And I have the screens turned down just because when I'm recording the picture washes out when the screen's too bright. So you can see here, a little bit taller. And on the back, you can see Surface Pro 7 Plus is just ever so slightly wider. All right, if you guys have questions about the two devices, then go ahead and put that in the comment section. I'll try and do my best to answer this. I'm sending the Pro 8 away today to the makers of this stylus they're going to be working on well they need it so 
Anyway, this is going to be disappearing today, but if you have questions, ask them immediately, and I will try and get to those very quickly. I'm not sure if I said it. This with the keyboard, this with the keyboard is $279 plus tax. 50, 35. So there's a pretty big difference in price just on the accessories. Both of these qualify for the education slash parent slash teacher slash military discount of 10%. So you can get 10% off and then handle the accessories separately if you want. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you use a stylus with a Windows tablet, this is a great channel to subscribe to. Let's stay creative and I'll see you in the next video.